Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Indie Bazaar where we take a dive into the weird and wonderful world of indie, of indie gaming. And this week we are taking a look at Rush Rover, a game developed by a group calling themselves simply Radio. And uh, this is on Steam for $5. I believe you can also buy it on Game Jolt. I will have to look into that to, uh, to verify it. And we're just going to jump right in here because this is a uh, sort of a game... Sorry, one second. Sort of a game where um, showing and telling kind of go hand in hand. So, <coughs> what you got here is um, kind of a an arena shooter with roguelike elements in the same vein as something like The Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon or especially Nuclear Throne. Um, so, we spawn in here. We are this little guy that looks like an iPod group guns and our goal as in uh, most games of this type is to shoot the bad guys which we do by default with this little plasma gun and uh, as you might expect you uh, can get various other weapons and various upgrades and all that good stuff the the main difference between um, Ro uh, Rush Rover and other games of this type is really just the scale. Uh, Rush Rover is a bit smaller. There aren't quite as many items, so you know you're getting um, a, a sort of a, a scaled down experience. But <coughs> I, have to, I do have to admit that this game took a little while to grow on me, and we'll come back to this later. It's basically a mini game. Um, I I saw it actually via the Steam recommendations page, which usually only recommends me like the newest Call of Duty and VR games and other things that I am far too poor to afford, but mixed in with all that um, was this. I believe it was listed because I had played Enter the Gungeon, which fair enough. Um, and you know, usually you don't find something that's genuinely uh, under the radar like this via the Steam recommendations page, but I, I've, I mean, I've looked this up and I've looked on, uh, you know, various other review sites, various other YouTube channels, and uh, so far I really haven't seen. Um, what do we want to upgrade here? Go with the pulse gun first. We can buy that later on. Anyway, um, I really haven't seen too many people talk about this, which. I have an inkling that it's because of the art style, which I personally actually quite like, but it is very, um, you know, if you wanted to be disparaging, you could be like, oh, it's kind of Indie 101, it's pixel graphics, everything's kind of simple looking, and, you know. Um, the individual style is sort of Spartan, but I do think that's kind of done on purpose. Generally speaking, anything that is blue or white you are interested in. Um, either it's coming from your robot here or you're trying to collect it, whereas anything yellow or red you want to avoid. Um, but uh, yeah, whatever the reason, uh, this really kind of just seems to have passed a lot of people by. Uh, despite a, a fairly successful, from what I understand, year-long run on Indie, uh, not Indiegogo, uh, Steam Greenlight, or whatever they're calling the program now. Um, this was in early, not not, uh, not Greenlight, sorry, early access. This was in early access for about a year, to my understanding, and the full game came out, uh, I wanna say the end of November? I'd have to double check on that, but the point is it hasn't been out for very long. <coughs> so I'm kind of surprised to not see more people jump on this. Um, Again, it is kind of a smaller scale game than something you'd get with, you know, uh, Isaac or Gungeon or... Uh, Nuclear Throne's the big comparison I make just because um, the roguelike elements are kind of more of a secondary focus here as opposed to the, you know, kind of 50-50 mix they are in Isaac and Gungeon. This is still very much... Uh, you know, of that Total Carnage, Smash TV, 
vein where you're you're trying first and foremost to simply not die. Um, <clears throat> there is really a lot to keep in mind at once, especially as we get a bit further on. There's also no floors in the game, or at least not that I've seen so far. Um, and I have gotten to the, what I believe is the, the normal ending of the game. It is all just one level like this. And if you'll notice, that actually does nick uh, Dun uh, Gungeon's um, teleporter system. You can click any of these points on the map, and if you hit the space bar, it will transport you directly to them. Handy, because backtracking would be a pain in the rear end otherwise. These teleporters, um, uh, teleporter components, I have not quite figured out what the deals with them yet. I have an inkling that they are sort of a key, not unlike the Polaroid and Isaac, and we are about to face our first boss here, so let's keep a stiff upper lip and keep our missile launchers locked on him. <clears throat> One of the, the negatives about the game's visuals is that it does kind of mean that most of the bosses look pretty similar. There's a couple that have a, a bit more of a standout appearance. Um, whether it is just by virtue of sort of being shaped differently. There's one that's kind of like a, a snake. Another one's sort of got like a three head thing going on. Um, but they do all have this basic look of like a, you know, orangish yellow body and then a red uh, core in the center. <clears throat> and I'm sure you've noticed by now, but we did in fact pick up another weapon. This is the missile launcher and it is in fact one of my favorite weapons in the game there's only about by my count about a dozen weapons or so um and they're fairly well balanced there's a couple that i think are like very much better than others but it's not um you know as bad as it is in something like isaac which i say that as somebody who likes isaac quite a lot but definitely in that game especially you've got uh the haves and the have-nots in terms of weapon strength. Whereas in this game, I think you can kind of make anything work um, as long as you are willing to upgrade it. And you, speaking of upgrades, you've probably seen me bring up this menu a couple times. And uh, what this is, this radio menu, is actually your level up screen. And this was kind of my initial... Uh, the thing that kind of put me off initially to this game a little bit was I didn't really understand what was going on here because I don't do a terrific job of explaining it, but <clears throat> let me take a sip of my drink here and I'll try to uh, spell this out for you as best as I can. So essentially, uh, this is your level up screen. You've got these three components that you start out with that are your primary things. Your powertrain is just how fast uh, the rover moves. Booster is that dash move you've seen me use a couple times. And this in the middle is your weapon. Um, these slots are upgraded regardless of what is in them. So if you upgrade the missile launcher and then you switch it out for a new weapon, it'll still be at power level 3. It does not reset. Which is good, because it lets you uh, experiment with the weapons a little bit more freely. <clears throat> All these other things, uh, you got, we see we've got two blank ones over here and then a bunch of empty slots. These are various kinds of items you can get. You can get probes, who are basically little buddies that orbit around your rover and they attack in some form or another. Plugins are basically passive abilities. Skill slots are active items that you can use, um, usually on a timed cooldown. And then you got two blank spots over here, and you can actually buy more slots, um, either a secondary weapon, another probe slot, a plug-in, or you, know, you can double up, get two of the same, so you've got three weapons. Um, <clears throat> it's a very interesting way to uh, add a little bit of extra customizability into the game. Um, and with that in mind, kind of in, even in spite of what I said earlier, it, it is... It does require some strategy. It's not purely just, uh, you know, shoot or be shot, even though that is a large part of it. <coughs> um, the way that I tend to work in this game, I've found, is I tend to focus on upgrading the weapon first, 
just because I find that it gets a little bit overwhelming if you end up facing some of these slightly later enemies and they end up taking like four or five hits to kill and you're not too far into the game yet, you know, can get a little annoying. But uh, I don't think there's really a wrong way to do it, at least from what I've seen so far. Retrofit spare weapon slot onto the rope. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. We can actually uh, buy this and you will see that, uh, or maybe you won't. Hmm. I think this one might actually just like go over top of the other weapon slot and we can like toggle it back and forth. Yes, okay, I was wrong about that, so my apologies. Um, the additional slots are only for the probes, plugins, skills. I think that's, I think it's just these three. But still, uh, the comment stands. You can kind of build your character in a couple different ways, which is, you know, it's nice. <coughs> um, so, the, the thing that, um, other than the visuals, which, I mean, I like, but again, I could see them putting some people off. I think the big thing that's going to put people off of this game, well, there's two big things. Um, one's kind of a technical problem, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But, uh, the other one is just the kind of apathetic user inter interface. I kind of feel like the game doesn't 100% care if you understand what's going on or not. So it does, there's a little bit of a learning curve, um, just in, like, learning what everything is. But for example, um, you'll probably notice up in the corner there, I've got two different kinds of, um, currency, basically. I got the blue ones and the orange ones. The orange ones are essentially your money. You can use them to buy things from shops. You can see here, we could buy a second probe, sh probe slot for 35 of those. I just call them coins. I don't know what the actual name is. Um, <coughs> the ones up top are more akin to uh, keys. And you use those to open depots, which are essentially chests. Those are your battery cells. And in fact, it even tells you core battery can reactivate crafting bots, blah, 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 blah. Um, crafting bots are basically shops. So it's kind of, it kind of does the thing that, um, to give a an, an, an example in a totally different genre, it kind of does the thing that uh, Middens did a couple years ago, where it has all the familiar elements, but they're just sort of renamed for thematic reasons. I, I understand why they did that, but it is a little bit, you know, um, it, it does make the game a little bit harder to get a hold of than it might otherwise. But if you can get over that initial period of like, oh, you know, what, what am I doing? Um, I, I do think it really comes into its own. And I have to admit, like, for the, the first half hour to an hour or so that I had this, I was kind of like, I was um, sort of muted on it. I was even a little bit like, maybe I wasted my five bucks. But after that initial period, you kind of learn the like, ins and outs of the game. You learn the flow just kind of by doing it, and I think it becomes a lot of fun, even if it's not, you know, something like uh, Gungeon or, again, Isaac that you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of hours out of. It is a, a good game. <laughs> this is a lottery. I don't really understand how those work, to be quite honest with you. This here is a depot. This is basically just a treasure chest. We got a... Oh, we got the dual fire. Okay, this is an active item, which we... Actually, we can make use of this, because we have a second weapon slot. Um, yeah, alright. So here. Let me show something off. Um, can I buy this? I cannot. Where did I leave the other gun that we had? Um, pulse gun. There it is. Okay. So. Again, like, you're probably looking at this and not quite understanding what it's telling you to do here. What it's saying is you can either swap it for your current rep weapon by hitting the shift key, or you can equip it as a secondary by hitting number pad 1, which I am going to do. So, you'll notice I still have uh, the missile launcher on normally, but if I hit the number 1, it swaps back to the plasma cannon from earlier. Now, the, weapon that, or the item that I just picked up is called the dual fire, and if I tap the space key, 
I can actually fire both of these at once. So again, you can kind of build those little synergies. If you've played a game like this before, you kind of know where I'm coming from. You can build these little synergies and um, you kind of get different kinds of runs going and experiment a little bit. <coughs> Pardon the coughing. Really bad allergy season out here. Yeah, asthma season rather. Is that a thing? That's not a thing. You know what I mean. Bad time for asthma. Anyway. Um, so you can you get these little synergies going and it's really satisfying when you get one that's just like you're just tearing through uh, any anything that's coming your way. Now to an extent the missile launcher and another ooh, goodness that sound. The missile launcher and another one of the weapons on um, the it's called the dev blot. Hopefully we'll see it so I can remember the proper name of it. But uh, are do seem to be like a little bit more powerful than the other guns, but um, even just on their own, but kind of a minor quibble uh, compared to some of the other things. <clears throat> the other big thing that I think is going to give people pause about this is the audio. And um, not the soundtrack. The soundtrack is fine, and in fact, if you pay an extra dollar on Steam, you can get the soundtrack standalone. And if you're into chiptunes, I, I think you could do a lot worse for that 99 cents. But... Um, the actual sound effects, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the game itself or if it's a problem with how the game is sort of talking to my computer. Oh, we got another boss here. I think I recognize this one actually. Yeah. No, never mind. I thought this was a different one entirely. Okay. Anyway, um... <laughs> Or if it's a problem with how the game is talking to my computer. But uh, the sound effects sometimes seem to be uh, not affected by how loud or soft you have your volume. Um, whether that's just the audio itself being messed up in some way. Or if it's like multiple sound effects overlapping and not canceling each other out properly. It's, it's kind of hard for me to tell honestly. Um, oh, we died. Oh no. Yeah, we'll start up another run, but probably not finish it, because I'm actually almost done with what I'm talking about. Uh, <coughs> so, that's annoying, um, is that the audio will sometimes be just randomly very loud for no reason. The game is, to my knowledge, still in active development. I think the last patch came out, at, like, November 20. Sixth or something. So uh, my hope is that they will get some feedback on that, maybe even from this very video, and fix it. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me, but if you are, you know, somebody with sensitive ears, or you just don't like loud noises, which really not many people do, especially not unexpectedly, I could see it being a bigger problem. Um. The other thing is, I mean, again, the smaller scale, but I think that's just kind of the game uh, knowing its audience. I don't think this is really trying to be uh, a contender with the games that inspired it. I think it's more trying to be a, a sort of smaller take on the genre, something a little bit more compact that you can maybe see all there is to see in a week or two instead of playing it endlessly for however many months. Um, <clears throat> like, I don't, I don't know if I'll come back to this after I unlock everything in it, but I might. I mean, I'm not dismissing the possibility, but uh, I don't really think I need to, like for five bucks especially. Um, you know, I think it's scaled appropriately for what it's trying to do. And the something I haven't even really haven't haven't really even mentioned yet is um I do know that there's at least two endings. There's the normal one, which I have gotten already, and then there's one that involves the teleporter fragments that I was talking about earlier. You get four of those, there's some room you gotta go to on the map, and something happens, I'm not sure what the big deal is there. There's one of those teleporter fragments. Um, 
I do kind of wish those were marked on the map so they were less easy to miss, but, you know, deliberate obtuseness is nothing new to the genre. This is cool. I don't think I've had this one before. We, uh, appear to leave a trail of fire whenever we dash. That's pretty cool. Huh. But yeah, like, there's a lot of little things like that in this game, and I, and I sort of wary and wary of coming across as too negative because I actually do like it. I mean, I've said this before. I don't cover games on this show that I don't like. The reason I'm being so kind of uh, steeped in, in um, uh, you know, caveats with this particular game because I think more than the usual, it does kind of have a couple things that might put some kinds of people off. Um... <coughs> And I think that the things that are fixable, like, a lot of the icons are just sort of weirdly small, is another thing relating back to the general, like, UI usability problem. And, I mean, that, I think, could be easily changed. Like, this is the level up animation right here. This little icon that says Core Plus. Um, f my first few hours with the game, I constantly, constantly, constantly was in a position where I just didn't realize I had already racked up several level ups. And, um, I don't know, you contribute it to player, uh, um, inattentiveness if you want to, and honestly, in my case specifically, that's probably at least a little bit fair, but, <laughs> um, I don't think we got a boss already. But, I do think it is worth at least considering, like, maybe redoing some of the little, some of the UI a little bit. Uh, the really the only major major problem though is that sound thing because that's just like clearly not working as intended but again like if you like these kind of games especially Nuclear Throne I really have to emphasize it does feel to me like there is a lot of the, um, the strategic backtracking of Gungeon as well but the actual gameplay, moment to moment, when you're fighting the enemies, feels very nuclear thrown to me. Um, so if you like that game especially, and this genre in general, I would really recommend giving it a look. It is, again, only five bucks, and I, you know, uh, not trying to encourage anybody to be a cheapskate here necessarily, but I do know some people, including myself, price is a pretty significant factor. And you could do a lot worse than this for five dollars, definitely. Um, and another thing, it just just kind of, you know, I don't know if it upset is the right word, but I do get a little bit bummed out when I see uh, a game that is not perfect, but definitely still well made and deserving of an audience kind of get passed over because it's not, you know, um, jumping on a hot trend or lacking a distinctive visual style. No shots at Cuphead, I love that game, but you know. Um, something like this that's a little bit more low-key might get passed over just because it's not quite that bombastic. And I, you know, one of the reasons I do this show still is because I kind of like shining a light on games like that that I think people might be inclined to look over because they're not quite as boom in your face as uh, some of the other stuff that's out there both indie and mainstream so I mean yeah that's kind of uh, my piece on Rush Rover um, let me turn the music off now since I'm about to end the episode yeah <clears throat> um, yeah like I said if you're a fan of these kinds of games definitely definitely give this one a shot if you don't know whether you like these kind of games this honestly might not be a bad in point for the genre. I mean, again, the low asking price really is a big selling point. And um, the fact that there's not a ton of items to get a handle on, I think, means that it might be better for, for newer players. But uh, again, like, you really can't go too wrong with giving this one a shot. So that's all for this episode. Um... This episode's probably going to be going up on the same Thursday that I record it, which is a little unusual for the series, but as I said in my last update video, kind of trying out a slightly more relaxed format on the channel because I am devoting more time to my live streams, which you should check out. And on that note, if you like the video, 
please like the video and you can follow me on Twix in the link below as well as on Twitter to get updates as when I upload new videos, go live on Twitch, and so on and so forth. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.